All right, cuz, let's get right into it. Where were you born and um, raised? Uh, I was born in North Minneapolis back in the late 60s. Um, I grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Now, what did that do to shape your view of the uh, world? Because I grew up in a predominantly black area of Baltimore, too, and it did a lot to shape my values of equality and egalitarianism and things like that. What did it do, um, you know, how do you think that shaped you growing up in, um, in, in that place? I think it really... Uh, uh made me understand what community is okay you know um i've lived in an intentional community before um and that's actually part of how i ended up here um now define that a little bit commune type of thing or what commune so like they, they don't like the name intent or uh commune anymore okay um and in but back in the day we yeah, yeah. we called it yeah, communes. They, yeah. they were called com a lot yeah. of them were called communes because they they shared everything right um intentional community is a little bit more broader um like i lived in an eco village like we didn't necessarily share income there was communities within that that did share income okay. but you didn't have to share your income to live in it but you still lived underneath this uh, uh sort of same sense of values. Okay, because that's a California. The people associate a lot of that with California. and yeah. uh, this is actually Missouri, though. Yeah. yeah <laughs> okay, it. so I'm curious. You're raised in uh, Minnesota there. Yep. What was it that attracted you to that type of uh, communal uh, living arrangement? What was it that sparked in your mind one day and said, I don't want to be a traditional, you know, ham and egg or out there doing the engineer thing or whatever. But there had to be something in your mind that kind of attracted you. Was it an educational thing? Was it a philosophy thing that you stumbled onto? Um, I think it comes from the fact that uh, while I was uh, born and raised in, in uh, like the inner community, my mother came from 13 brothers and sisters, which at least 10 of them were farmers. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, my parents divorced when I was fairly long, fairly young, so I spent a lot of time on farms. Okay. Raising foods, things like that. So That gives a kind of cooperative uh, spirit in family and well, things like that. More, more raising, knowing, knowing what you ate, you're okay. eating. You know, like, oh, I raised this, I did that. Uh, well, not necessarily I, but like you're, you're in close connection of it. And then, so when I got a little bit older, I want to say practically when I was an adult, I joked with people about how someday I was going to buy land in the middle of nowhere and start my own that's fucking it. hippie that's commune because I hate people. <laughs> because, <laughs> because most people, most people in, in, uh, uh, in white community don't understand community at all. Right. Like they <clears throat> nod at their neighbors. They don't know them. Um, where that's not the case in, in, yeah, I in think it's probably city. something you know ingrained in the are, culture. Because yeah. if there's somebody else that isn't your neighbor around in there, yeah. they're probably suspect. So, so now, you, you know them under necessity. Let's fast forward a little bit. You seem like a highly educated person. College or anything nope. for you? Okay. Now, uh, basically a high school dropout. Okay. I, I graduated um, because I did night school. Okay. And, and finished out well. Okay. But, uh, but doesn't mean that I'm not self-taught. Well, that's what I'm saying. A, it does. To me, I don't equate a college degree with any more worldly or understanding mm -hmm. of life and philosophy than I do of, uh, you know, a high school. Junkie. Yeah, exactly. So I've noticed, you know, in looking at the reading material you have here and you... You basically have to do everything yourself around here, and you probably did the solar and mm -hmm. you know and things like that. So, did you get a traditional uh, career going, or did you did you try that for a while, or did you just jump right to the idea of uh, I, I call it communal living, oh. but cooperative? No, no, I, I didn't. I didn't do the the communal thing until I was uh, in my forties, and uh, I did. I, I can't really ever call it traditional because I never, uh, out of out of most of my working career, I maybe worked four years for somebody else. Okay, like from sixteen, 
on like I own businesses. I owned a roofing company for a while. I did that for many years. Uh, then I bred dogs. Then I did this. Uh, but the you didn't one... relish the idea of falling off a roof one day or something. Oh, oh I, I, I feel the pain every day now in <laughs> yeah. my fifties. I'll bet. You know, Carrying those I, books of uh, I only have some up. knee surgery, oh, but like boy. I've gotten to the age where I can no longer remember which is my bad knee because right. they both. <laughs> That's it. So now we can fast forward. You said there was a communal type living in Missouri and some other things. I think my viewers are going to be curious. Slab City's a long way. It's about 19 miles. Oh, sorry about that. We got a little wind situation here. But Slab City's about 1,900 miles. I remember I brought Missy Jan out to uh, California from Missouri. No. It's a long way uh, from Missouri to California here. What was it? We can kind of fast forward a little bit. What was it that uh, attracted you to come out how did you hear of Slab City, and did, was there another way station place on the way? That uh, elaborate on that for our viewers a little bit. So uh, I realized things were coming to the end for me at Dancing Rabbit. It wasn't going to be my forever home like I thought it was going to be. Now that was the communal yeah, okay. in Missouri. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I still haven't, still hadn't given up on the idea of I want my own place to start my own comedy. Maybe, right. maybe this larger picture thing isn't what what it is uh, but i still want to do the small thing right. and uh, i really wanted to spend some time learning about nonprofit law and things like that and in one of the last visitor sessions uh at dancing rabbit somebody was talking about coming to slab city right after leaving here and you're me, probably like what the hell like, is oh, that what? like i i had heard about the place on the mesa <laughs> you know that's a similar thing although people usually own their own property there um but yeah i spent probably a whole month just researching what this is and of course the first thing you see is the vice documentary <laughs> right. um, yeah we'll get into the we'll get into the image and what what the average well, person yeah, yeah but but <laughs> Now, don't tell me that attracted you. <laughs> you know? yeah, yes and no, because, okay. uh, like, the story itself, it didn't, but the B-roll did. Because oh. in a lot of the B-rolls, I'd be like, oh, that's a quarter of a million dollar RV there. Yeah, this is this is something different than that's just being portrayed there. I'll go. I'll go check yeah, it so out. Yeah. So B roll is looking beyond the storyline and seeing the back. You know, yeah, yeah. the back. Often story. they're just panning on. Stuff exactly. And, exactly. It's called yeah. called B roll stuff. So you decided to. Uh, you've been well, here seven. I, did I, you make an initial visit to? No, I did not make an initial visit. I wasn't like, and that was the same thing when I moved to Dancing Rabbit. I was like, I'm gonna go there. If I like it, I'm gonna stay. Right. If not, I'll move the fuck out. Right. Uh, right. And uh, I originally. Was like because I at Dancing Rabbit I had spent a year living in a tent in, in Missouri. It was one of the coldest seasons out I'll there. Bet. So it was it was kind of an interesting challenge. I was like, now I'm gonna go live a year in the desert. And I'll tell you, we're and gonna get to coping started. with the heat in a minute. But you got out of here. I, you just you basically gave yourself a mental one way ticket out here to Slab City. Yep. You probably I'm gonna check it out myself and see what it's like now. What was it that attracted you? not attracted you but once you got here what were your initial thoughts when you came down the um road there from uh, Neeland and you got into uh slab city i'd love to know what your first impressions were when you came in uh i just thought people were doing it doing it different here and that was pretty fucking cool that's pretty you know pretty cool uh, no, nobody was really being harassed about what they were doing uh as long as you weren't uh, bothering people, people. Just Did you have the off. thought like, <clears throat> this is something I asked you earlier. How do you pick your place when you come into a place like this and that you're not stepping on toes and you have this sense of community? So you need to come in, I guess, on the right foot. You don't want to be like a, uh, you know, a renegade uh, tough guy. So people are curious how do you pick out your spot here at the uh, slabs to you know you have a nice bluff here that overlooks you can actually see the salt and sea from your uh your area up here how do you pick uh a spot just find a vacant you know what was your thought process that, that's kind of two answers uh 
uh, I'm gonna give you two different answers because the first one is like if you're coming to Slab City, what what should you really do? And then there's a little bit more about how I came across okay. this. So really, if you're coming to Slab City, uh, like look around for some vacant vacant area, and then go around and talk to all the people that are around there. That's a good and, idea. And see what the what the area is like. You may find out very quickly that you don't like the people that are around right. there, and that's not going to work out for you. Right. Or you could go, and many people do this, they find a vacant spot and just kind of build. And then, then they have a bunch of energy invested into a spot that they're going to later take down and move because it wasn't the right yeah. spot for them. Yeah. Um, just like you said, you moved your stuff a quarter yeah, of a mile or yeah, something yeah. up the road. And, so. and uh my my move necessarily wasn't because I didn't like the people where I was at. It was more like uh, I stayed a summer so people clear out um, and you can get a lot better view of uh, the spots that are kind of available. And nobody had really set set up a camp at this spot that they came back to. Very many, uh, yeah. from my understanding, lots of people would come here, spend most of the winter here, and then leave. And then it wasn't. Uh, 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 one shot johnny yeah, yeah. type of thing um and there's a a tree uh kind of in the middle of of what's the eco village uh that was occupied when when i got here and they were planning on leaving and i made a nice little trade for it That's good. um to, uh, so that everybody you know no, nobody's feeling like taking it now you know what they it. want to hear me ask you next huh. how about that first summer in uh in slab city what did you think when you now remember you're raised in minnesota right now and you and you froze your ass off in a tent in missouri you come out of here and brother this is this is a whole i mean i've heard people I, bitch and moan for years about the uh surviving the heat of summertime what did, did you have any second thoughts uh gone? not at all really no i, I okay. love when when they talk about dry heat being a thing it is a thing. Right. I will take 120 in Slab City over 90 in Minneapolis. Oh, of course. Or Baltimore on the Chesapeake Bay yeah, yeah. and the humidity. Or all that humidity and stuff. Yeah. Like, I just literally want to mm, kill people. Yeah. Did you but, have to train yourself to stay hydrated and stuff? Was that a risk uh, when you first got out here because of the, you know, the evaporation? and? Uh, I, or... I didn't really have to train myself. I, I drank a lot to begin with. Okay. Um, so I didn't really have to do that. The one thing that I had to... Uh, remember to do is like for every two glasses of water you should have uh, a glass of electrolyte stuff yeah. as well to make sure that you rehydrate. Yeah, that's good. Well, but you, you, you seem you pretty educated that, about that. But you've probably seen cases of people just falling out of here. I know death has been a reality out here in the slabs and probably not enough attention to self and understanding yeah. the environment and um, things like that. So I know that's been a recurrent theme occasionally. Yes, people do die out here in uh, in Slab City. Now let's fast forward. Has this met your expectations over, this will be your seventh summer coming up. Has this fulfilled your dream of how you want to um, live life? In other words, do you see yourself um, uh, in another community or do you feel like this is, this is home for you? So I, I do feel that uh, uh, Slab City is home for me, but it very, very well may become a winter home for me. Um, uh, like, I do want to. Uh, I miss seasons. Well, I, 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 I can't see you on skis, what? though, either, but uh, I'm just saying, I, I, you I, know. <laughs> I have been on there. Cause on skis. That'd be like a viral video yeah. right there. But um, I think you've carved yourself out a great place here. Has uh, Now, uh, my last question, um, two questions. What can they do to, what would you, you always ask people, what, what, what's something you would change about uh, Slab City? What You ask that to a lot of people over the years in interviews. What would you change if you could wave a magic wand and change one thing about the uh, slab city here all right i have answered this before and it's actually why i started doing youtube is to change the perspective of what people think slabs is tell me what you think that their perception of uh, slabs is because youtube is I, you're always as an entertainer you're always yeah. going to try to put the view what i call the view spin on things so, is that well, what you're the, the clickbait <laughs> The last lawless town in, in right. we have laws. 
All right. Or Imperial so, County Sheriff's coming in and, yeah. you know, locking somebody up or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. like, uh, so that's really what it is, was more to change the perspective of, like, this is a city, uh, a thriving city that actually has a real close, tight-knit, several close-knit close knit communities, you know? Um, people will often talk negatively about tweakers all right right but the reality is they have their own community and when one of them is acting up people in the community talk to them and they're right. like hey come on what's chill out right? and yeah, just like you know? come on man um, yeah it, it, that yeah. actually does happen so you would like to change you know over time to change that perception of people that you're not coming into a place they're going to rip the tires off of your you know wake up in the morning and all that yeah like any community there's going to be certain people that are johnny badass out here uh and all that so um so you would change the perception thing would be the main thing that you would change yep. uh out and, here and the reality is i probably wouldn't have to change that if everybody would watch all the way to the end of the YouTube video about Slap well, I'm City. I'm sure they'll be watching we, this to the end. We know they only watch about 50% of the way through, but I promise you, if you watch all the way through all these other Slab City videos, they all will tell you, wow, this is a cool desert community. Last question. Coming in and integrating yourself as a new person into this um, community. There's still people, I think, that have the dream, like, oh, I'd like to go to Slab City and just hang out there and chill out. I mean, it's, you know, it's not anybody's hanging on my ass all the time. I don't have to answer to the man and all ham and egg and, and things like that. Mm. Uh, would you say it's a easy or hard community to make make friends in uh, here? Oh, I think I think it's an easy place to make friends, okay. right? Um, because uh, for the most part... Most of us uh, are being used to being judged and, and, and thought negatively about. So, like, we really don't want to do that to other people. Right. So we're a lot more. Uh, well, that's I a good thing accepted. to know. So yeah. you would tell people, hey, if you want to come, if you're curious, come in and check yeah. it out. And you'll, you'll, you know, try to talk to some people that you uh, see. What would you say the hub is? Like the range, the library uh, here? So... Uh, currently, there's, a, 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 I think, two kind of hangout spots, uh, or three, I will say. Uh, they are all tend to be a bit more like bars, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll say. There, there's drinking involved and stuff like that. And that's uh, the handlebar at the skate park. Uh, they also do, uh, Aaron, I'm going to take you there later. Right. Um, Dan there, who was uh, uh, part of my community the first season over there, cooks meals for everybody every night. Wow for, I want to say, well over a year and a half now. They've been doing that. Um, That's cool. So then, community is, you're yeah. happy with the community uh, spirit here. You can find it if you want it. If you, if want you it, don't want it, you can find your solitude. It. Thought of one more question that right. might be interesting. When you got here, how long did it take you to make yourself feel like being in the middle of a hot as hell desert? And it probably gets chilly here in the winter time too, mm. right? That's when I, I showed up. This yeah. How long did it take you to really feel like now this place really feels like uh, home? How long did that take till you really built? Like this is a great place. I have to tell you, you're on a mm. bluff. You got a breeze up here. Uh, how long did it take you to really feel like, yeah, this is this is it? Oh, I mean, that's why I'm still here. Is because it, it was damn near instantaneously well, okay you know and and, and while well uh, i mean you didn't pull this trailer in yourself did you i mean no. did you you know just co-opt somebody's uh, well no uh I bought it off people and stuff like oh that okay bring them up here yeah that's cool that. okay well good well cause i think you're um i'm here because i want to bring a realistic story of uh, slab city i don't want to you know clickbait people uh, on enough people will watch this and they'll watch this interview and thing get a real taste of people here so with that um cause and i are going to take off and do a little bit of uh chooching around here around this lab so cause thank you for a great interview and um i will have the link to cause's channel down below i think he's one of the most watchable people on youtube 
and I think uh, you'll see me on his channel coming yeah. up too. So, thanks, Cos. I appreciate it. And be a Cos, be a cosmonaut, right? Join the Cos, join the Cos. What do you call? It? Yeah, Cos. It's cosmonauts and cosmonauties. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> thanks, Cos.